Hey Reader Pops, welcome back. Today we are going to be discussing the reading journal. I have always been obsessed with not necessarily journaling as in like writing down my feelings, but making makeshift planners, using highlighters, cutting little pieces of sticky notes to plan out my video ideas or yeah, mostly just plan out my video ideas. I used to do that so much in 2019. And then when I started reading books, a lot of people use an app like Goodreads to log their books, but a visual representation of the books that you've read and even creating fun little spreads like favorite book of each month. Just a visual representation of it is so fun and it's so relaxing and I love nights where I just get all of my supplies out I make a mess on a massive table and I could legitimately sit there for like three hours and get lost in it <laughs> So it's so relaxing So I'm going to show you a flip through of what I already have in my reading journal And then we need to finish out the year because I haven't done my like October November December spreads And then I also want to set up my reading journal for next year. Let's just get into it So this journal is actually from Urban Outfitters and they're my favorite things ever, but they stopped selling them and I don't know where in the world to find one similar So if you have any idea, please let me know because it's a cloth bound stitched outside But then the inside is a bullet journal and I've never been able to find something like that since so first page just says reading journal It's not that fancy. So this is actually my 2022 reading journal So I'm just gonna fly through this flip through a little bit But this was my top 10 books of 2022 my August TBR I was really using some construction paper here. Here is my August read spread. I don't really like how this looks Looked, but I ended up reading like 21 books that month, which is still to this day the most I've ever read in a month and probably ever will. <laughs> August videos and reading vlogs. This is one of my only scrapbooky pages for a series that I read and I really like how it turned out. This is for the Shatter Me series. So I just went on Pinterest and printed out a lot of little edits and character fan art. This is my YA fantasy series TBR and I kind of don't have interest in reading any of those books at the moment. So <laughs> that probably won't get filled out very much more. This is a very incomplete six star read spread where I was going to write things on the side. This format on my thoughts is very inspired by Katie is reading. Honestly, most of my reading journal is inspired by her. So go watch her channel because I'm obsessed with her reading journal. And a lot of my spreads are just like bad copies of hers. But as you can see, I didn't even really know what to write for the six star read. So I just stopped writing. And then I actually love this spread. This is my end of year TBR. And again, a lot of the books on this one, I don't have any interest in reading. So they probably won't get filled in. But I will say this format encourages me to read the book so much because I want to just fill it in and watch the little counter thing go up with color. So that is very encouraging. And then I have a book video plans and reading vlogs, as you can see, never got around to planning the reading vlogs, which is awesome. I have my series tracker. I also really love this. I actually need to go in and fill out because I have read the entire Throne of Glass series now. I tried to track how many pages I read per day for the entire month of September, but this was actually really hard because you basically have to keep up with the math every single night. I kind of just started guessing for the end of the month because I did not keep track. And then I did a little September book haul spread where I also logged the books that I bought and then which ones I actually read, which I I read like almost all of them except for four books, which is really good. And then I have my September reads, my physical TBR, which I think I purposely wrote down tons of books that I just read so that I could fill out this tracker here, which was really fun. And then I have this map, which got sent to me from an Etsy shop that I'll put the name of right here. It's so cute though, she draws maps. October TBR plus the October reads, kind of a more lazy spread, but it's cute, I guess. And then we have 2023. I didn't mean to write January TBR and then have all of these boxes, but that's, uh, that's what happened. So there's that. My January video plans, my yearly TBR. I need to go check off some of these boxes actually. I did read a lot of these books. This is a page that is directly copied from Katie is reading. It's the little bookshelf thing where you just fill in one of the books on there and write what it's named. And I love these spreads so much, but I didn't keep up with it. So I'm gonna have to fill this one out. January books, February books. These are very lazy, as you can tell, kind of afterthoughts. Nonfiction TBR, did not read a lot of those. March books, April TBR. I did a spread for my video where I read till I find a five-star book. Wait a second. That is not the books that I read in that video. I don't know what that is. These are actually books that I read in my Japan reading vlog. So I don't know why it's called reading till five-star book because that's not the video that that is for. I have my May videos. This is what I was talking about with like my journaling in 2019. I would write out a little calendar thing and then I use sticky notes and an X-Acto knife and then I put them on where I think I'm gonna post a video. And I love this system because I never actually post the video when I think I'm going to. So then I can just remove the sticky note and move it to where I actually did so that by the end of 
the month, I can look back at it and see what my posting schedule looks like. So I've been doing that for years. That's like my favorite part of journaling is those little sticky notes. June video schedule, May reads, June TBR. Oh, I love this spread actually. Husband controls what I read for a month for that video. I printed out the five books that I had to read. I actually like have these in my main channel videos, the little uh, tracker that like goes up and I kind of tried to draw that. My printer messed up one for my enemy and there's a little bit of shatter me on there, not sure why. And then I haven't done anything with this yet, but I printed out all of the Throne of Glass books and stuck them onto this page. So I kind of need to make a Throne of Glass little scrapbooky page there. July schedule, my August reads. I don't like the writing on these spreads. I want to change that somehow. I did a fall TBR and I will never do cursive again because I can't even read the books there. And then I have my September reads and my October TBR and that's where we left off. Now it's time for me to actually start journaling. My October reads, November reads, December reads, and then favorites of each month, favorite books of the year, and then start on next year's spread. Also, I bought this Lecturum journal when I was in Nantucket just because I can't resist buying a journal when I travel. I thought it was blue when I was in the store but it's actually gray, which is a little bit sad. But in here, I wrote down my Tower of Dawn and Empire of Storms tandem reads that I could physically check it off every time I read different chapters from both books. So that was really fun, but this one doesn't have dots. I don't really know why I have this journal. I just have another one. It's kind of like a sloppier version if I don't want to do like a perfected little cute spread in my main reading journal, or I just want to jot some video ideas. I think that's what I'm going to keep this journal for. Before we hop into me actually journaling though, this video is very kindly sponsored by Book of the Month. I work with them all the time because I am I'm actually obsessed with them and personally subscribe to them. So if you don't know what they are, they're a monthly subscription service and they have people read through hundreds of books and then choose their favorite for each genre. And then they release the books that they chose for that month and then you get to choose one and it gets shipped to you. And if you see the books that they chose and you don't want one, you can skip it for free. But I have actually found so many debut authors or books that I've just never heard of before and read only because I trust Book of the Month and ended up loving them. And I have a little collection going up here, as you can see, and all of the spines match up at the top, which I think is so satisfying. And I love the construction of the hardcovers. It's the best deal that you can get on a hardcover book. It's amazing. So for this month, I chose No One Can Know by Kate Alice Marshall. Never heard of this author, but if it's a thriller that book of the month chose, I'm definitely going to be reading it. They also just started this thing where you can use your credit for the month towards an audiobook instead of the physical version. So yeah, I'll have a link in my description and you can use this code to get your first book for only $5. Thank you so much, book of the month. You guys are my favorites ever. Here are some of my journaling supplies. They're not very organized, but I have this milk tin. It's like what they put their cookies in, but it makes a great supplies holder. We have colorful pens, these highlighters. I'll leave a link to the Amazon links to all of these things. Various post-it notes, these sticker books from Bando, my favorite ever, an X-Acto knife, various washi tapes from either Japan or Target, some colorful construction paper. I have these mild liners, which is what I mostly do the title pages of all of my spreads with. So highly recommend those. I have a mini pouch with more post-it notes that I've collected over the years. I used to collect them from the Target dollar section like all growing up and I still have them. I didn't used to use this. I used to just use regular paper and then stick it down with like a glue stick or tape or something like that. But I bought this letter label sheets, which is basically like the whole thing is a sticky back. So if I have a lot of like little miniature books to print out, then I'll use this paper and then just stick them into the journal. And then lastly, I have black construction paper to do black backgrounds or this cardboardy little texture to do backgrounds as well. First of all, how I print out the little book pictures for my book journal is I go into my Goodreads profile and then I click on each book that I want to print out, download that photo, it's very high res, and then put it in a Google Doc and I change the image size to one for the height and then the rest will auto conform to that size. You can mess around with the size if you want. I used to do 0.87, now I do one. It doesn't really matter and then you just print that out. So I'm doing my October reads and I don't really ever know what I'm going to do as I'm doing it. I just was like, oh, I could put this on a construction paper background and then I had gold washi tape. So I was like, I could make this a border and then I wrote October reads and then put that as like a header. Like I just kind of go with the flow as I'm doing it. I try to use stickers, I put washi tape, I sometimes just doodle, it doesn't really have of any rhyme or reason. And then with the extra sticky paper, I'll just draw December reads or whatever title header there is and then cut that out so that it kind of looks, I feel like just anything with layers kind of looks cool. Washi tape background with a little matching color scheme and then putting the books that I've read in December so far. And then I wanted to make a page that was my five star reads of 2023. For stars, I think of the color yellow. So I was like yellow construction paper background and then printed them out and doodled a little bit. And that's pretty much it.
So starting on setting up the 2023 reading journal, I don't really know what to set up other than just like the title page to kind of separate the journal a little bit. So I'm just taking up two whole pages to do 2024. I used some of the extra label paper to cut out the 2024 to make it look a little more 3D like I was saying. And then I used a bunch of different washi tape and then stickers. I don't know, it's not that cool or anything, but it'll do. And then lastly, I wanted to go back and just fill in the little library section that I had never finished, and I actually was left with so many books left. So I'm gonna have to continue using that one for 2024. That's it for the reading journal. Now you guys have seen it all and I'm so excited to continue it for 2024. If you have any ideas of what spreads I should do, let me know. As always, I'll just continue showing you what I do in them in my reading vlogs. Thanks for watching this. Don't forget to use code SWEATER to get your first book of the month book for $5. Insane deal. And I'll see you guys somewhere else on the internet. Bye.